Oh, I love it, man. I'm a big cyclist. So, uh, in fact, I have a little story about, I'll tell when I get this thing going about, uh, biking back from your 10th anniversary, uh, bash. Oh, uh, the birthday that, bash. <laughs> yeah, but I'll save that. Uh, Oh, uh, shit. I don't know if he's coming back. Did Ash, like, give up, do you think? No, or? no, he'll be back. He might have he might have had to plug his phone in or something like that. Um, but I think that uh, he should be fine. And straight up, Jason, straight up, I never do that. I have a rule. I won't do this. Like, I will not, like, this whole, like, record and drop it at a different date. It goes, it just, we don't do it on Toronto Mike. Like, it's all sure. like, but, I mean, fucking love you guys. So, it's like, we'll do what we got to do here. No, it's uh, it's interesting. I remember when you first uh, when you first reached out when you first reached out to us way back when, but I forgot that it was actually six years ago. Well, I was gonna. I'll bring that up. Ash was in this, the double digits. Like I'm on episode. I think this. I don't know what it'll be because it's gonna happen in January. But it's like almost episode 800. Whoa! Wow! wow. Amazing. <laughs> you got you get that. You get to see this because of that. Oh, that's, that's fucking crazy. amazing. 50 goals in 39 games, right? Yeah, yeah. OG 81-82 or oh Gretzky God. Collector Cup. I was the I had Wayne Gretzky sheets on my bed. Ooh. <laughs> that's All right, awesome. guys. We're gonna get into this because uh I'm I'm afraid of Tiffany, so we gotta get into this. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? Ash, Jason, how are you? Amazing, buddy. Couldn't this be better during the pandemic. Yeah, this has been a, a, a glorious uh, stroll down a, a beautiful um, uh, rever reverie, like uh, just a laneway of, uh, of yeah, just, you know, couldn't celebration. Have said, couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, so, Ash, you're no stranger to Toronto Mike. I was just telling Jason that you were guest number 95. Oh, oh not 99? <laughs> you weren't, you weren't the, yeah not the 95. great one but... <laughs> holy like 95 that seems like 100 years ago i don't know this is a, a much bigger number but that's a personal favorite episode of mine i'm sure you've uh, thought about it over the years right uh, I, uh only when i was only when i put the uh, silk sheets on <laughs> the, the silk wing gretzky sheets hey jason you've never been on toronto mike till now but i I did, uh, like, I last saw you outside the Opera House at the party for Marty. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was... Uh, uh, the party for Marty. Yeah, it was great. It was just uh, interesting to see all the original cats, and especially uh, those that Ash and I would recognize from when Hollow Point first got on the edge during Martin's time there. You, well, you know what? Um, yeah. I, I got to say, well, we were just talking about the Opera House, like, just, that was the last thing we were just talking about, but on the topic of Martin's streak, um, the one of the first shows we played at uh, at Rebel, which well, well, when it was Sound Academy, right? The curtains, the curtains were closed. Martin Streak was in front of the curtains. He announced that, like, that we were who was coming on, and hearing his voice, growing up with his voice, hearing his voice say our name as the curtain opened, and it was our first sold out show in Toronto, and it exploded and he turned and l gave me a look and just a nod that I, like it's like a, a never forget kind of nod you know just that here we are we did it like we're here i mean how badly do you guys miss martin streak because just the quick aside i think i mentioned this in episode 91 but i was privy to like footage video footage this is after martin streak was let go by the edge he was like recording like a television show behind the scenes and you guys were there. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen this. Like, I don't think yeah. it, like he would have been, he would have been amazing in this era of digital. Like, I think he would have been like dominating. Yeah. That's uh that's on uh, YouTube. That's like backstage pass. I think yes. it was called. That's what it's called. Yeah. Backstage pass. And uh, that's when Ash put a nine volt battery on his tongue. Yeah. We, yeah. That's yeah. We, that happened. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize it was so public only because the way I saw it was that I was actually doing work at that production house at the time. So I, I thought I had this sneak peek, but it sounds like it's everybody can access it now. But it was just, I just, whenever I think of Martin Streak, I think about like uh, just how how he'd still be kicking ass and taking names today. Like uh, just, we well, missed he was him. He was such a tastemaker, you know? I mean, ultimately, what are we talking about here? It's like, who's got good taste? Like we call that in our world, you know, well, sorry, in, in the world that 
you know, Jay and I have been like, the, we've been orbiting around each other. And now, you know, we're hitting a rocket thruster and shooting off to go orbit around other things, which is awesome because that's what space exploration is all about. But with Martin Streak, it was like, um, you know, people are ultimately tastemakers. Program directors are tastemakers. Um, Jay and I learned from some really incredible producers and, and songwriters along the way and mentors, um, you know, that like to be a tastemaker or just the concept of quality control as it pertains to like melodic quality control. And a lot of people are afraid to, to um, be t like, are afraid to actually like really like take it like do you know how good your song has to be sir do you know how many there's do you know how many songs are available on the internet uh mike 30 million there's 30 million available songs right now at the push of a button and and do you like listen hey you want to listen to my song here's one of them like it's, right. you know like it's got to be fucking good <laughs> think about drain you by nirvana think about how good that song is put your song beside that song and tell me that you don't need to go and like tweak a couple of things anyway sorry no you know love means never having to say you're sorry but uh i guess i'll cut to the chase here and then we'll come around and i'll tell you a little story about what happened to me after your 10th anniversary bash that i was at and it seems like just yesterday to me but uh like say it ain't so guys um uh, the new album it's available now it's your final studio album so einstein's of consciousness is your last project together in the studio like what the fuck man tell me what that's about evolutionary theory my mic <laughs> um no yeah, you know what like well i'm sure ash will build on his answer but um I mean, it's been 13 years and like, we've, we've done it all in our, in our minds. And like there, there, you know, there's always a chance that we'll join forces again one day, but to be, to focus all of your energy into one thing for so long, mm -hmm. uh, there comes a certain point where um, you need to continue on your own journey. And I think that's what Ash and I are very looking forward to. And we did give it our all and the results, uh, <laughs> Ash, what's the Steve-O line? The what? The oh, Steve-O Steve -O goes, Steve -O goes, I just, I just, I just fill my body, I just pack my body full of all the cocaine, ketamine, GHB, and nitrous oxide I can, and I'm getting all kinds of results. <laughs> <laughs> but like, is this, is this a, uh, is this a mutual, like, do you guys yeah. look at it's each like, other? Well, okay, it's like, ahead. no, but when I made that space analogy, you right. know, We've landed on the, we've landed, we, first we sent probes and then we landed a man on the moon. Um, different countries have sent space probes to every planet. You know, the probe goes along around for a while, does its research, and then say it flings off the gravity, the like the orbit of gravity of that, orbitational gravity, that one flies over to another one and does, so, checks it out over there. So we've, we've done our, we've, we, we've done a, like, you know, we've been around, this planet as many times as we needed to with the available tools and the research. And, and it's time to just kind of, you know, our satellites are just going to head to other discovery orbits. Jason, I'm just checking out the, the gold records. Are those gold records behind you? Uh, yeah, we, we have, uh, Ash and I have a gold one for this is the best and a, now a platinum one, which we got in July. Cool. Uh, yin yang. And then we, um, uh, oh, and I have one with uh, over my shoulder with lights from her record from 10 years ago. Do you have the Casby Award? Like, because I was at that. So speaking of Martin Streak, like uh, I was there like five feet from the stage when Streak and Strombo gave Whoa. you guys the Casby Award. Was that, which one was that, Jay? Was so, that the song of the year? This is, ho this is Hollow Point for favorite new single, 2008. Right. Which I believe oh, Martin Streak yeah. and George Strombolopoulos presented us with. Yeah, that, that's, that's right. Saying. They were together, and it was a big moment for me to see them because they, you know, they're buds. But uh, they were, you know, Strombo and Streak were on the stage at the the Cool House, I think it was, 
uh, given that award to you guys for Hall of Point Sniper Hyperbole, which fucking still, by the way, still holds up. I played it on my podcast the other day. It still fucking kicks ass. And then this one is for favorite new artists. So we got two that night. And um, this one from Strombo and Martin Streak, I think the video of it's on YouTube. Hmm. Oh, you know what other uh, is an in, uh, inside track story, Mike, about that yeah, night please. was um, my I was greatly inspired by, you know, the early 90s Toronto indie rock scene that, you know, Treble Charger, Change of Heart, uh, Head, Hayden, um, all of those bands. So my my uh, I, I had a family connection to Noah Mintz, who now has a mastering studio, but he was in a band called Head, which also, you know, Head. Yeah. So Head had Brendan Canning in it, which then Broken Social Scene. So um, as a songwriter, Noah was like a massive influence on me, Noah Mintz. And so when we, his band won the 102.1 Discovery to Disc Contest, won a hundred grand in like 92 or something. Yeah. And they recorded an album called Jerk that got shelved and then had disappeared. And so... I brought him out. We played a song called Porno Star Trek. We played Hollow Point. And right. then at that night at the Casby's, we played a second song. And I got Noah to come and I invited him. And he played lead guitar, my hero, got to play lead guitar. And I just got to get like, this is what you deserved. Wow. But you back in the major label days when they would just shelf your album because they're like, this won't sell. Right and game over so that was that uh anyways dude no dude you're you're preaching to the, this is this is the shit i'm looking for like that's amazing <laughs> uh you might like this line i drop it often on uh, toronto mike but head took the h that was missing from rhymes with orange because remember ah! <laughs> rhymes of orange yeah. was missing the h and h and head had two h's I and by that. the way that uh discover i think it called it the new music surge i think was yes. what and uh the song Cause that's actually that compilation. Can I be happy. I still fucking love that song, man. Dude, I love so, happy. You know who else was on that? Was Hayden. Uh, Hayden, and he had a song called "Take." Take and, a part of me. Guess who sings it? Noah, because Hayden hated the sound of his own voice, what? and he got Noah Mintz to sing it. That's Noah singing it. Are you? But it sounds so, like Hayden. Like no, Hayden before that would have Hayden. to get ten people to come to his shows to sing all his songs. Are you sure about this? Because I'm gonna start spewing this, and I gotta know it's true, man. Because it's absolute. It's absolutely one hundred percent the truth. So Noah Mintz's younger brother um, Aubrey Mintz is a good friend of mine. Okay, and he designed the Lo Heads logo, and they were from Thornhill, and I grew up in Unionville. And my brother was the drummer in Aubrey's band. So church, but they were called church bus. So mm -hmm. they used to open for head at, in like the moon room and Oshawa and all this stuff. Yeah. And so I was just in awe of like being that, you know, like a foot away. So when Jay, you know, to hear the influences in our band yeah. is it's, it's that tight to, like how 90s Toronto rock and roll is like in my blood. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got Mike. Uh, yeah, Mike, Mike Troublecock is coming on the program. I mean, that that's my wheelhouse there. But this this whole notion that Take by Hayden, which is on that new music search, because it's short but sweet. Like it has got the I don't know who the woman is in the backing track. Do you know who that is by any chance? Uh, I wish. OK, I wish I we'll knew. find out and get back to me. But the fact if that's not Hayden, it's not. I, Wait till Stu Stone and Cam Gordon hear about this. This is going to blow your mind. Oh. <laughs> Come with me. Get away. Actually, hold on, Mike. Dude, I, I can sing Mike. it all. You want me to sing it for you? <laughs> Take <laughs> me with you. Ready? Take a part Take of me. me. Take me home. Take me with you. you. Take a part of me home. Take a part of me. Take all of me. Come with me. Get away from me. Please agree with me. Disagree with me. Come with me. 
get away from me. Yeah, it's fucking amazing. It's a bit of like that Nirvana grunginess, you know. I I love it, man. Oh, but it was like a lullaby the way they yeah. did it. And the, I'm sorry, I just, whoever the I woman is, and I'm sorry, Jason, we'll get back to you. But no, I love it. I love it. Go for it. I don't it. know. If it. I thought it was Hayden my whole life till right now. So my brain is just blowing. But I thought Hayden's voice in that song contrasted with the woman voice, which was so sweet behind it. I just loved how they blended together. It just was music to my ears, man. Head. Okay. Good stuff here. Um, so many places I got to go first. I just got to tell you before I find out what the hell's next for you guys and talk a, a little bit more uh, about Einstein's and consciousness available now. Uh, it seems like just yesterday I was at your 10th anniversary bash. Like I remember hanging out with Jeff Woods. Remember, Ash, I introduced you to Jeff. Ah! <laughs> Are you kidding? Yes. And then I wound up in, and then Jeff Woods, I wound up uh, inviting to a brunch uh, in a converted church in Meaford and then he met his now girlfriend oh my god yeah I heard he yeah near uh near Thornbury yeah Meaford's near Thornbury so it's all the same area yeah and um and wow. they've actually yeah it's and she's and he's built a, a really studio good, there yeah she absolutely. financed a studio or something it's, like that it's a I thank you for that connection they've become a really important part of my friend circle you know, I felt like uh like when a prettier girl shows up at the dance because me and Jeff were having a great convo <laughs> Right. We're kind of hanging out. You had a great vibe at that event, that 10th anniversary bash. And then I saw you in the corner of my eyes and I just introduced you to Jeff Woods because, Jeff, you know, Jeff Woods has that voice. <laughs> and then I got this feeling really early. So, Jason, I'm not your get gig. And I felt like, oh, I should leave these two alone. They're having a, like a connection here. And I just sort of disappeared and went and I was hanging out with Roddy Colmer, I think, for a bit after that. That's awesome. <laughs> I think I remember seeing Ash and, and uh, Jeff talking in the corner because uh, it was just hilarious looking around the room and seeing all the faces from all the years. And yeah, um, yeah, what a night! Oh. Uh, and if I can make that love connection between uh, Ash and Jeff, I feel like it was all worth it. Oh, but uh, this is where my story's going. So I'm I biked there and I was biking home that night along the waterfront trail. So I'm going by like the Palais Royale and it's a bit downhill. Some guy crashed into me. I went over the top of my bike and had a pretty damn good crash and broke my pinky. And oh. pre COVID I had stopped with the handshaking because it hurts. If a, you know, a guy wants to show how strong he is and he does that death grip. Yeah. Yeah. It would hurt so bad. I tried to do like more like wink and nods and stuff. So pre-COVID, I'd cut back on the handshaking, and it's because I broke my pinky biking home from the uh, 10th anniversary bash. Damn! Wow! <laughs> yeah, you you got ahead of the yeah. curve. That's for sure. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank that's, you. That's, okay, it's so all, it's on all the bus stops. We got to get ahead of that curve, you know. That's right. All right. So uh, I'm really sad by this because, as I mentioned, I was at that Casby Awards and I've been really into you guys since I heard Hollow Point Sniper Hyperbole on 102.1 The Edge in, in 2008. Uh, you're actually the first band my oldest son saw live in concert. Uh, like I'm going to be really sad that you guys are done. So what's next for you, man? Like one at a time, tell me what the hell the plan is after uh, after you promote this album. Ash, go for it, man. Well, uh, something that we feel wonderful about, uh, Mike, is that, uh, you know, there are a, um, there's an, every single band on earth is wanting, going to be wanting to try to play shows as soon as they possibly can, as quickly as they possibly can. And, um, you know, we're just going to take, we're just going to sit in the back seat a little bit and just kind of like, we're not in any rush and we're really excited to have the opportunity to play like want to do one more tour together and uh that's going to be wonderful um in the meantime um you know my path in life to kind of you know to overcome um the you know i i suffered from really um pretty extreme ag agoraphobia and social anxiety and um really wasn't able to leave the house um, and I just always just was just writing these songs and these ideas and, um, um, you know, this entire process of all these albums, this music, um, my, my process as a human being of being a person uh, that couldn't leave the house uh, and had, you know, low self-esteem and didn't have any confidence and couldn't speak up for himself and was just afraid of being alive um, to... Uh, one week after this album drops, I start yoga teacher training. 
um, is is the adventure of a lifetime that Coldplay speaks about, and it's been my honor and privilege, you know, to um, have had the opportunity to share the experience that I've had, you know, both as Einstein's of consciousness suggests in you know the quantifiable fields of science, but also sort of taking a little bit more of a risk and kind of surrendering to the uh, the unknown and the unknowables of 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 life and the mystery of um, you know um, what happens when we change our mindset, change our attitude, change our belief systems, uh, and um, you know uh, start to maybe see things like miracles start to happen like a person like who I was becoming the person that you're talking to right now so that's that's the next step for me um, in my life and then bringing music um, to that uh, mindfulness uh, meditation yogic experience and also when Jason and I met I had a grunge pop band called Mensa Dropout that opened for Human Kebab the Garage Rapper in 2004 at Latcham Hall in Stouffville for 40 kids 40 teenagers and um i have uh an ep for that band almost finished uh and i'm excited to rock again and maybe toronto mike maybe 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 uh just maybe we will see mensa dropout uh opening for human kebab somewhere <laughs> in toronto mm. Uh, in some tiny little dirt hole of a basement somewhere, which would be my 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 dream come true. So I know a place. If, when you're ready for that, just let me know. I know. A Do place. you really? Yeah, my place. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dirt, dirt hole, hole of a basement, thing. right? You've been down here. This is the perfect spot for it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's got it's gonna have to be somewhere. That was a great answer. I actually thought you might say that you'd go back to roofing because last time you were here, you were talking about how you were still roofing. Well, I, you know what? I, I still moonlight. I'm not going to lie. Um, however, um, I naturally, like I come from a family of teachers and I, I do, I suffer from uh, lead singer. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Like lead singer, self-important spot, death spiral of like, just fucking like existential dread and just like, dude, fuck off. Like, so there's, it's just because I wasn't in harmony with whatever void exists in my being because I, I wasn't in harmony. Anyways, what it comes down to, Mike, is, is that I just naturally found myself like wanting to teach my family how to relax and that I had been shown by, by people in different places how to relax, how to breathe and how to calm down. And then I would have them out on the lawn at my cottage, like, all breathing together and relaxing. I bring out my acoustic guitar. Everyone's lying down quietly, and I play some melodic, mel like lullaby songs. And and it's just, it was like, dude, I don't have to roof anymore. I still want to do music, but in a different way. What if I bring this to that experience? Holy shit! All right, cool. Let's. Wow. Cool. Amazing. Okay, Jason, yeah. and Jason, I I can't be clear enough about this. Whenever you're ready for your proper, you know one-on-one -on -one deep dive here on Toronto Mike. You just let me know, okay? Mike at <laughs> torontomike.com. Just so you know, because I've been unsuccessful in my attempts to get you on the program uh, until today. So you're always welcome back. But what's next for you? Because uh, I know you're, you're like a radio star, DJ extraordinaire. Like, what is next for you? I'm just going to continue on making music and uh, collaborating with people. And um, I've always got some irons in the fire around the way um 2021 i mean uss record first and foremost which is amazing um nice. to begin with our sixth album ash and i may or may not have something else in the works that we're giving you as an exclusive in this conversation because you're a great guy um <laughs> but uh yeah i mean i'm i'm just you know what i'm malleable like i move with the times and my djing is something i do naturally but it also evolved out of being on stage with USS and throwing after parties and just, that's just part of my nature. And uh, I'm sure I'll just continue to evolve and go from there. I did my first acting audition a few months ago. Um, so and, like I picked up an agent, so I don't know. I've just got all these things going on, but that's all I'm going to say for now. For Diversification years. is key. You gotta, you're right. You, you said malleable. I always say nimble. Like you gotta be, you know, ready to diversify that portfolio. 
Well, I think it's like you can't hang your hat on one thing your entire life, especially nowadays with how fast everything moves online. Right. And uh, I feel like, like many musicians before, during, and after us, everybody evolves and becomes whatever it is they're going to become to continue to sustain their lifestyle and their livelihood. Did you guys know Much Music stopped airing videos earlier this year and nobody really noticed that they aired their final video? Uh, uh, well, actually, er, sorry, earlier last year, March What 25. was the last, very last video? What band? Great question. Honestly, I wish I had the answer because that would be a fun fact. I'm going to find know it. What the vi- you, do you know the very first video ever played on MTV? MTV, yeah, Video Killed the Radio Star by the Buggles. What about MT- yes, that's correct. Sorry, MTV in, U- in the UK. Okay. No, it was no. dire straits, money for nothing. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. No, I love it, man. Uh, you, you're welcome back anytime too, Ash, because uh, I could just chat about these fun facts and head for the, for the, for the 90 minutes, but let me just leave you with this. Uh, great band seen you live many, many times. Fucking love you guys. And I can't wait till you can finally do your farewell tour, but whatever you guys both, you know, do, in your lives, man, uh, you have our support. You have a lot of fans who will be rooting for you. And I just can't wait to see what's next. So I'm sorry this is ending, but it sounds like it's a new beginning of other chapters and we'll be rooting for you guys. Mike, thank you very much, man. And uh, we'd love to take you up on that offer down the road to see you on another podcast. And I'm glad I got to do it with Ash because Ash was speaking your gospel years ago when you guys connected. Uh, it was. Wait, way we have to make time for this. Did he say good things about his appearance? He actually made mention of it like emphatically because I remember at the time, I think you reached out on Twitter mm-hmm. if I'm if I'm actually being real because I run our social media and I made the connection point to, to, to our team and Ash was like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> oh. And he was like, we talked about head. We yeah. talked about Toronto music scene. Drum and bass, USS. And I was like, okay, this is okay. It's real talk because I know you guys, I see we're up against the time limit here, but uh, I, I actually typically tell anyone, I just, you know, if it's Eric M, whoever the hell you are, I need at least an hour to do my thing. Yeah. Ash, I got a half an hour with Ash and I said, fuck it, I like this guy's music. I'll do a half an hour. And it was one of those things where it's like, I could have easily done, you know, four or five hours with Ash. I, the synapses were firing. It was just yeah. frenetic energy. I loved it, man. Well, we'll have to do it again. We will definitely do that again. Uh, new albums out now. I, uh, Einstein's of Consciousness. People should pick that up. And good luck to you guys. We're going to miss USS in this city. Hey, we'll see you at like 18, episode 1800. <laughs> I'd love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the good work, man. Thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. I know uh, Tiffany wants you on some radio thing, which apparently is more important than my little podcast, although I probably have more listeners, but that's okay. (laughs) No, seriously, you guys fucking rock. And uh, if you ever need anything, hit me up. And uh, good luck with all your your promotion here. This will air on January 8th, so I got to hold on to this. I've never done that before. This is the first time. Wicked, man. Well, thank you very much for having us. It was an honor to finally do it. Peace and love to both of you. All right, you too, brother. Great. Bye-bye. Yeah. Peace.